Good evening. My name is Portia Council, and I will be presenting a case study about the effects of coenzyme Q10 on pulmonary hypertension. So I found a case. Uh, it was funded by the Cleveland Clinic, and basically what they set out to do was to see what were the effects of the coenzyme Q10 on people with pulmonary hypertension and see if it would lessen their symptoms. So I'll start with uh, a little background information. Pulmonary hypertension is a progressive chronic disease that eventually leads to death. It is characterized by the proliferation of the heart's vasculature resulting in right-sided heart failure. Dysfunction of the mitochondria is associated with pulmonary and cardiac disease. Mitochondria provide energy for all cells through oxidative phosphorylation and is the main site of hemisynthesis. Iron is incorporated into the protoporphyrin ring by mitochondrial ferrochelase which allows the production of hemi and hemoproteins like hemoglobin. A dysfunctional mitochondria results in a dysfunction of oxygen utilization and energy production and, hem and hemisynthesis. All of these are key symptoms well defined in patients with pulmonary hypertension. As a result of hemi malformation that occurs along with the abnormalities of hemisynthesis and hemoglobin production, these patients also have a greater variation in the size and distribution of their red blood cells. This is called an increase in red cell distribution width. It is a prognostic marker of pulmonary artery pressure, heart failure, and mortality in these patients. Although it is not correlated with B-type natriuretic protein, also known as BNP, which in itself is a validated biomarker of myocardial stress and most commonly heart failure. Mitochondria are also the primary site for the production of reactive oxygen species created as a byproduct of electron transport. They contribute to the process of injury and inflammation of the pulmonary vasculature. It is believed that interventions aimed at the improvement of mitochondrial function may benefit in pulmonary hypertension. Coenzyme Q is widely used for treating mitochondrial related diseases. It plays a vital role in the mitochondrial metabolism by serving as the electron carrier in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Its functions include transferring electrons from complexes one and two to complex three and acting as an antioxidant in the redox cycle. During electron transport, coenzyme Q is reduced to ubiquinol so it can, so it can pick up electrons and protons there it is oxidized to UV quinone and it is released and electrons and protons are released. Coenzyme Q10 inhibits both the initiation and of and initi it inhibits the initiation of lipids and protein oxidation. According to research, coenzyme Q has also proved useful in the prevention and the treatment of cardiovascular diseases. It is hypothesized that coenzyme Q10 supplementation in patients with pulmonary hypertension will cause improvement of mitochondrial energetic and synthetic functions, potentially benefiting patients. To test this hypothesis, they assess blood levels of reduced and oxidized coenzyme 10, hemoglobin, heart structure, metabolic parameters of redox status to examine things like 
reduce and oxidize glutathione and pyruvate and lactate. Pulmonary hypertensive patients were compared to healthy controls at a baseline and followed throughout 12 weeks of coenzyme Q therapy. So the objective, uh, once again, of this case study was to study the effects of coenzyme Q10 on patients with pulmonary hypertension, comparing them to healthy patients. This study was conducted as a non-random open label study. It took place in Cleveland, Ohio at the Cleveland Clinic, which sponsored the case study. All the participants had to sign a written consent as mandated by the Institutional Review Board. People included in the trial were healthy males and females, and uh, males and females that were diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension class one, ranging from ages 18 to 65. The patients who had pulmonary hypertension had to have been on their current medication regimen for at least the past two months. And all of the women involved in this trial that were of childbearing age had to be on double contraceptive precaution, precautionary measures. Participants who were excluded from this trial uh, included anyone who was enrolled in another clinical trial, anyone who had suffered a serious illness within the last month, anyone who had a hepatic insufficiency, anyone who had renal insufficiency, um, anyone who had an allergy to any component of coenzyme 10, Q10, or uh, any patients with a uh, acute heart failure episode within the past three months, pregnant or lactating women, and people with a history of alcohol or drug abuse within the last year. So again, the subjects were patients that had been diagnosed by a right heart catheterization uh, with class one pulmonary hypertension. The endpoints, the primary endpoints of this study were measurements of the left ventricle in diastolic volume, which was taken before treatment started, uh, six weeks into treatment, and again at the end of the three months. Right ventricular outflow volume was also taken at these three times. Right ventricular myocardial performance was also measured tricuspid regurgitation grade and right arterial pressure were both measured also at these times. Secondary endpoints that were also measured at the beginning of the trial, the uh, sixth week and the twelfth week were uh, complete blood counts which included uh, red blood cells, hemoglobin, hematocrit, mean corpuscular corpuscular hemoglobin and red blood cell distribution width. Uh, Follow-up of the subjects, follow-up from the subjects were uh, to report back in six weeks and also to report back again in 12 weeks to attain le um, levels. The trial span uh, from the trial began in 2010, but it officially ended in 2014 and was officially registered in 2015. Health, uh, the population consisted of and men and women diagnosed with the class one pulmonary hypertension uh, in the United States with ages ranging from 18 to 65. The arms of this study were comparing healthy individuals versus closely matched individuals with pulmonary hypertension who were taking 100 milligrams of coenzyme Q10 three times a day for three months. 
For the statistical analysis, each hypertensive patient was classified by the New York Association's diagnostic test. This test measured the presence and severity of symptoms along with the six minute walk test, which is recommended by the American Thoracic Society, Society of Dyspnea and Fatigue. And they were also tested by the Borg Dyspnea and Fatigue Scale for BNP levels. Two dimensional echocardiograms and Doppler exams were given by one sonographer at, which means the same sonographer was used at each visit for the patients. Uh, intraventricular septal thickness in in diastole left ventricular and in diastolic dimension, left ventricular in systolic dimension, and posterior wall thickness in diastole were me were measured according to the American Society of Endocardiography Guidelines. The coenzyme Q effects on intracellular metabolism and redox measured concentrations of plasma, lactate, pyruvate, and reduced oxidized glutathione and reduced levels of coenzyme Q10. Plasma lactate and pyruvate assessments were performed in diluted samples using lactate and pyruvate assays. A range of authentic lactate and pyruvate standards were used in the assay. Reduced and oxidized glutathione were measured by examining the amount in the serum. The data was reported aggregately by a mean SEM for continuous data and as a percentage value for categorized data. Deviations from the baseline were assessed using a pair T categorized data test by a pair T. Uh, deviations from the baseline were assessed using the pair T, mess, T test method. Similarities were identified using the Spearman correlation coefficients. Significance was found to be alpha 0 0.05. The JMP software system was responsible for the analysis of data. The ANOVA analyzed data within the separate groups, and when a difference was detected, the Tukey test was used. T tests compared between healthy and pulmonary hypertensive patients. So the results of this study. Um, patients with pulmonary hypertension showed a great, greater coenzyme levels than the healthy patients. This may have been due to non-adherence of the healthy patients or uh, a difference in metabolism found between the groups. The pulmonary hypertensive patients also showed a higher ratio of oxidation once they began to supplement. Hemoglobin increased and red blood cell distribution with decreased in these patients. The BNP did not show much deviation from its original values, neither did the six-minute walking test. Measurements were, uh, measurements were taken from patients with pulmonary hypertension at six weeks and at the end, along with before they started. Um, in the beginning of the test, healthy and Patients with coen with uh, pulmonary hypertension had equal amounts of coenzyme, but once the supplement therapy began, the patients with pulmonary hypertension had a uh, had a decrease in coenzyme concentration, had a had a higher degree of coenzyme concentration. The six minute walk distance did not show a change. The Borg dyspnea fatigue scores were also close. Um, with a p-value of 0.4. Echocardiograms uh, improved, the left ventricular and diastolic volume decreased in, in the 12 weeks and the right ventricular outflow improved. The right atrial pressure was decreased by the coenzyme Q10 therapy 
and tricuspid therapy regurg uh, tricuspid regurgitation also showed a decrease in baseline. There were no significant correlations between echocardiograph parameters and uh, the coenzyme. So the p-value was about 0.1. Measurements that were taken from the patients of pulmonary hypertension uh, before the implementation of coenzyme compared to when they were taken later showed an increase of the red blood cell count, but the hematocrit stayed the same. Hemoglobin and mean corpuscular hemoglobin uh, showed no relation to coenzyme 10 but they were related to the reduced oxidized ox, oxidized coenzyme Q10 ratio at baseline. This indicates that hemoglobin synthesis at baseline is limited by coenzyme Q10, even though the levels are, were in normal range. In contrast to pulmonary hypertension patients, but similar studies, red blood cell numbers and hematocrit numbers decrease slightly with treatment and mean corpuscular volume and mean corpuscular hemoglobin mean content did not change in healthy uh, patients. The adverse effects out of the 15 participants, three dropped out, two of the pulmonary hypertensive patients dropped out because one suffered from extreme headaches and the other one had to stop because of hyperkalemia. The healthy patient quit because of complaints of nausea due to the medication. The author concluded that um, the mean corpuscular hemoglobin and hemoglobin both show promising increase. Clinical biomarkers such as six as the six minute walk and the BMP did not show much change but it is the author's belief that if the study had been increased in length and or the patients were given a higher dosage, that these two might have, might have also shown improvement. The trial did go on to show that there were benefits of taking coenzyme Q10 when suffering from pulmonary hypertension, and the low side effect profile makes this a favorable option for patients. The strengths of this study were that they were closely matched to uh, compare with healthy people. And another strength was uh, the frequency of testing, and not just testing at the beginning and end, but also testing at the halfway point and watch how the levels shifted during the trial. Weaknesses I felt about this case uh, was the population there were only 15 people that conducted the study, which is a very small group. There were only two men in the whole group. It was one man uh, on the healthy population. And it was one man that was diagnosed with pulmonary hypertension. All the rest were women. Uh, it did not indicate race, which is a big thing because hypertension uh, is sometimes higher in other races. So it's important to know what race this study was conducted on. Also, uh, it although it the study tried to include a broad range of ages, it didn't. It only included uh, ages ranging of 41 and 42, which is a really, really small age range when you consider all the people who can be affected with this disease. Uh, also, the length of time was short, so uh, which was also a, a weakness to me. And uh, another weakness I felt was that a lot of the uh, testing that was done on the pulmonary patients was not done on the healthy patients. So there's a little lack in comparison, but that was uh, omitted because of funding issues. In conclusion, this study was done in order to examine the benefits that coenzyme Q10 could have on a dysfunctional mitochondria, in turn allowing better oxidation of cellular function and possibly helping patients with pulmonary hypertension. In my opinion, further research examining a broader group of people and monitoring more characteristics of this disease would be useful. 
But for what was presented in this case study, the results looked promising. In, in most endpoints evaluated, there was some degree of clinical change. I would recommend supplemental therapy in patients with pulmonary hypertension that were eligible. The easy access of the over-the-counter drug and its low side effect profile make it a great candidate for routine use in these patients. Adherence and accessibility also make this antioxidant a feasible adjunct to pulmonary hypertension therapy. And that concludes my case study. Thank you for watching.